Today under Lifestyle, we will finish this bumper tire carrier combo. Today's video is brought to you by Empire Abrasives. All the cutoff wheels, grinding discs, flap discs, sanding equipment, everything I used to shape the bumper in this video came from Empire Abrasives. They have high quality products at very affordable prices. And if you use coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE at checkout and it's your first time there, you'll save an additional 10%. If you're looking for an easy way to save some extra money for your next project, I highly recommend checking out Empire Abrasives. In the last video, we made the Overland table that is gonna be the crown jewel of this tire carrier build. We also made a latch system that's gonna give us a third point of contact and make this a lot more solid. Now now we're ready to do some grinding, we're ready to do some cutting, we're ready to do some shaping and finish this job once and for all. We are finally at a point where we can finish weld this bumper. I'm gonna fill in all these little discrepancies that we have here, and then I'm just gonna do some really short welds, just bounce around so we don't get one area too hot. There's always a little bit of shifting and shrinking and expanding that goes on here, but if we're not too greedy and we do this slowly, it's gonna make it to where whenever we go to bolt this back up, these bolt holes should line right up, no problem. When I build projects that are shaped like this, I like to tack on something to hold it true as I'm doing my finished weld and finished grind. Just to make sure that while things are trying to expand and contract and they heat up and they cool down, we don't have a whole lot of movement in the ends of this corner protection. Notice when you watch me weld big pieces like this that I bounce around a lot from place to place. This is to make it to where I don't put too much heat in one spot. Because I do it this way, it makes it to where I don't get one area too hot, and it really helps reduce the amount of deflection and distortion that happens whenever you finish weld a piece like this. about to weld what I think is the most bend prone area, I guess bend prone, of this entire project. And that is this like 18 inch or so butt weld on this corner. Now the bumper is super strong right now. A lot of this has been finish welded and we've got some really good joints um, throughout this bumper right now, but we could still warp it if we just welded this uh, 18 inch span. Even if we did it in incremental welds, it's still prone to uh, bend a little bit. And the way that I have discovered works the best to keep that from happening is by giving yourself a little bit of a gap for the weld to fill. So what I like to do is just take a chunk of TIG rod. This is eighth inch. So um, we put three pieces of TIG rod in here and that gave us a perfect eighth inch gap that is going to remain there whenever we tack weld this in place. So what's sweet is that now I can just remove the TIG rod. We have a perfect gap. And then as I go through and weld this, if there's so much force that it could bend this bumper, which right now is really strong, then that's gonna be enough force to just pop one of these tack welds. So we kind of have a few built-in fuses here, which is great. And this corner is gonna be so obvious if we warp it because of the marriage and the reveal between the top of the bumper here and the bottom of our armor. So in order to make sure that we have that relationship looking good and make sure that it doesn't change on us, we're just gonna take a couple extra precautions. I'm gonna weld slow and we should know if something pops or we should know if it's uh, changing shape just by seeing if something pops. For those of you that like to plan out your entire project, start to finish, you even draw it all out with exact measurements beforehand, 
this is a situation where your style works a lot better. But I still prefer to just build and change things as I go along, and this is one of the drawbacks, is that every once in a while you're gonna have to butt weld something, whereas you could have just used one piece, it's now gonna be two with a joint in the middle. This was a late night. <laughs> I had a late night last night finishing up this bumper. So the fabrication on this is essentially done. I added a lower rim that went all the way around the bottom part of the bumper. And I highly recommend this. It sucks because we're adding weight. It's not a lot of weight, but we're adding weight. Everything you do to make this stronger, you're adding weight. But the benefits are gigantic. I've built bumpers without this lower rim and I've built bumpers with the lower rim. And I can tell you that rocks like to grab an edge that just comes straight down. But if you have something that's smooth on the bottom side, it's much more likely that the rocks are going to hit and then bounce off or slide off. And so since we have a lower rim, it's gonna make it so much easier for the bottom of the vehicle to eject obstacles out of the back as we move forward. Also, this makes the whole thing way more rigid. We just kind of finished up the box shape and this is gonna make it to where it's much more resistant to an impact from the side. It's gonna be much more resistant to an impact from the rear. If, some, if somebody rear ended us, we don't have to scrap the whole bumper as long as it's like, I don't know, 10 miles an hour or less probably. And so I, I think that, um, it was worth the late night to get all this done. So now we're ready for a rough grind on the bottom section of this. We're gonna do a finish grind on the entire thing. And then last night I had some lights show up that I ordered from Baja Designs. These are a flush mount reverse light kit. And uh, these look outstanding. They're gonna look so good flush mount on the backside of the bumper. Ideally, I wanted them to, on the sides of the bumper because I think that it would work really good on that 45 degree section. But because of the way that I had to gusset everything and keep it strong, there's no room for the lights on the sides. So today, we're gonna get this thing painted by the end of the video, or by the end of the day, rather, and then we're gonna get these uh, lights mounted, too. For those of you that have yet to bite off a project this big, it's hard to overstate how time-consuming it is to finish grind, finish weld, really polish up your surfaces to where the paint lays on super smooth and silky. The amount of time that you put into this process directly correlates with the quality of work that you will get out of it. been five long episodes in the series. I didn't think it was gonna take five. I was thinking three tops, but here we are. We're finally at a point where we can judge it, we can look at it, we can talk about what we would change, what we would keep, and all in all, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm proud of the job that we did here. I think that the backup, the reverse lights from Baja Designs look sweet. They're very like streamlined and flat. I think those look great. I think that the uh, extra work that I did on these corners um, was definitely worth it. The last bumper the, that was on this, the guy didn't make any sort of corner protection. So there's just like some bolts that were just hanging in there and it just didn't look very good. So I think that that is really nice. I really like the way that this finish turned out where these two surfaces meet right there. I think it's really smooth and it doesn't stick out and it's not glaring. I think that the only things that I would really change at this point is I would probably change that latch mechanism. 
I like the latch mechanism and it's gonna stay, but if I was gonna redo it knowing what I know now, I would build one lever that undoes two separate latches um, and I would make sure that that one lever has some sort of a pin that uh, makes it to where there's no way that it could just accidentally open. So the way it's set up right now, and I would also, I'd build my own latches as well. These latches are, this is good enough to trust because there is that heavy duty lower latch that's gonna make sure that if the upper one fails, the lower one is still there to have its back. But if I built my own like pin style latches with a spring, I would be really confident that those would, uh, they wouldn't shear or anything like that. But all in all, this is gonna stay. I'm, I'm happy enough with it that uh, I think that it's, it's practical. I, I don't see any reason why I would wanna upgrade it at this point. So we have three latches, two, two that holds it closed and one that holds it open. So what do you think? I guess we should do a little test run. <laughs> we'll set up our camp kitchen real quick. So we open that, drop a couple of these. And for now, I don't have this mounted in the window, and I will talk about that in a minute. So I'm just gonna keep it up there. And we are ready to cook. This thing is, it's quick, it's quick and easy setup. That's kind of the point of a lot of overlanding setups is making it to where you don't have to spend all day tearing things down and setting them back up. You can just live that nomadic lifestyle and have things be fast. That rooftop tent pops up and closes up quick. Our kitchen pops up and closes up quick. You know, if we need to get into our fridge, boom. Get into our fridge, get some stuff, prep it on the table. I like what I'm seeing here. <laughs> I think that this is gonna be a lot of fun to go out and use. Let's talk about this rear window real quick. The rear window, I was considering aluminum, I was considering plastic. I haven't decided which route I'm gonna go, so we're just not gonna do it yet. So that won't be done in this series, but I would say for a tire carrier series, doing a rear window is kind of a stretch anyway. So I'm just gonna do a video in the future that'll just be me building that rear window, whether it's out of plastic or aluminum. I need to weigh all the pros and cons of both and decide which route I'm gonna go but it's not holding me up, so that's not something that I'm gonna be addressing soon. I still wanna do all the electrical on this thing. I wanna do the uh, onboard air system in this thing, and that's gonna be a complicated system to see what I'm talking about when we get there. So there's a bunch more work that needs to be done, and I'm not concerned about that rear window at all. But for now, I think this video is over. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on the whole setup. I know that I can be proud of this and the fact that it is a one of a kind setup, but there's always something that you could make better, right? <laughs> so um, I think this is the best that I could do with the abilities that I have right now. And in the future, when I do other overland builds like this, um, you'll see some of these ideas be incorporated and hopefully every time I do one of these, they just keep getting better and better. Let's run through some quick comments from the last video. And we're gonna start with Ethan Sechrist. I was watching the Ultimate Adventure 2020 and couldn't help but think how sick it would be if uh, to see one of your rigs on that trip. We need to see that. Dude, I would love that. I really hope that one of these years I get the opportunity to go on Ultimate Adventure, um, maybe 2021, 2022, who knows? I've got a bunch of rigs that I'd love to take. Um, I just have to choose which one, but I couldn't agree more. That would be super fun to go and be a part of. Next question is from Michael Gonzalez. Why didn't you connect both latches to the lever? Well, if you watched the series of how all of that came to be, I didn't have the idea for that latch system until the fourth episode. And so I already had the lower one installed and I'm happy enough with those two separate latches. I think that it's still very practical and it doesn't take a long time to do the two independently. But like I said, in the future, I will build a latch system that will be one lever that undoes two latches or maybe even three, depending on what the uh, project is, who knows what I get myself into. Um, but this is just the reality of the situation. When you build as you go, sometimes you come up with ideas to make something a little bit better and this is just how it, it turns out. Jeep and Dave, sweet work. I'd be afraid of water getting in and freezing the in the sheath facing upward in the cable. <laughs> Sorry, I hope that made sense the way I read it. Um, hope it works out. I'm not really concerned about that for a number of different reasons. Um, Yes, cables can get clogged and whatnot, but we're talking about like this much cable. 
and it's a really big lever that only has to undo a tiny bit of motion. I don't think that this is going to be a problem, but if it did become a problem, then I can deal with it then. I don't think a rubber boot is really going to help anything that much, especially facing straight up like that, but I just don't see it being an issue. I think that this is going to probably be just fine. There's probably going to get dirt and stuff in the cable, just like all my e-brake cables. I've never had an e-brake cable that has been so packed with mud that it didn't work, and every e-brake cable I've ever had is packed with mud. So I'm not concerned, but again, if it becomes a problem, I will cross that bridge when I get there. Sean Miller. Hey, Nate. Love the videos. Thank you very much, brother. Just wondering, what drill bits do you use for drilling metal? Bits going blunt after a couple holes is one thing for us that makes fabrication not so fun. Drilling holes, even with good drill bits, is just not fun. I It's probably my least favorite thing if I had to pick anything from fabrication that I don't like. It is drilling holes. But I have a couple tips that I think would help you a lot. One would be to not just mount something in a vise and drill a hole. Go on Craigslist, find an inexpensive drill press like I did. It is going to save you so much headache with drilling straight holes and your drill bits, even cheap ones will last way longer. Two would be to make sure you set up your drill press on a, on the lowest speed. So both of my drill presses, both from Craigslist, both on the lowest speed and neither one of them chew through drill bits. Um, even the cheap ones that I buy. And then the third would be to get some good cutting oil. I use something from a company called, I think it's CLC or CRC. I'll have to, uh, I'll, you know what I'll do is I'll put together an Amazon shopping cart for this video, and in that I will put the cutting oil that I use. It's a foaming spray, it works really well. So I just use standard drill bits from a hardware store. You just get that like $25 drill bit index, and uh, th that one of those will last me years because I 99% of my holes are on a drill press and on the low speed <laughs> and with cutting oil. So I think if you use that combination, you'll have a lot better luck. Last question is from Dan Brown. Hi, Nate. Excellent series on the tire carrier build. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it, man. Um, question for you. What belt sander do you have? Looks like a nice machine. I will link this belt sander into this uh, video description. Um, I've had I've linked it to a couple other ones. It's one that I just got from a company called Ameribraid, and it is a outstanding piece of equipment. It's one of those tools that in high school and shop, I remember using the belt sander all the time. And then when I started fabricating, I've always wanted one. And then the owner of this company seems to like our channel, and I'm very fortunate enough to have them send this thing out. So uh, it's one of those tools that now that I have it, I couldn't imagine having to go back to not have it. So um, it's a good tool. I recommend checking them out. It, they definitely have my seal of approval, and I will put the link to that tool in the description of this video. A huge thanks goes out to the sponsors of this video series that you saw throughout. Empire Abrasives, outstanding company. Barnes Four Wheel Drive, outstanding company. And then even EMS Off-Road. They supplied the hinge and the latch mechanism that you guys saw. All three of those companies so far, it's, all the work that I've done with them has been awesome. So big thank you to those companies for helping us make this series. And thank you to all of you for hanging in to five videos. I've always wondered if doing a longer mini series like this would do well and so far all the feedback from you guys has been great so if you do enjoy these make sure you give them a thumbs up and if you're a regular watcher of the channel and you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe that helps um, show companies like empire abrasives and barnes that we're worth the investment because we've got a good subscriber base people that regularly watch our videos and, and want to stick around and see the content that we make if you want to help support the channel you go to thedirtlifestyle.com we have t-shirts hats net gaiters decals, that decal that you guys saw me use on the back of the uh, Land Rover in this video. My wife just made those. They're super awesome. It's like a topographical DL logo. So um, those will be at our website, thedirtlifestyle.com. If you want to help support us on Patreon, we have a Patreon link at our website as well. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.